Glory to God. Well, uh, I want you to uh, turn with me, if you would, to the book of Numbers chapter 11. Welcome everyone that is streaming, Numbers chapter uh, 11. Uh, (coughs) Excuse me. Let me uh, have a little drink of that. Everywhere, if I go preach somewhere, they ask, they tell me, your, your water's up there on it. And I, they put water, but I hardly ever do it. Uh, all the years I've been here, I've never carried a bottle of water yet. Afterwards, it's another story. Amen. Numbers chapter 11, I've been talking about a new season. And I said the first day, two weeks ago when I started it, actually three weeks, because one Sunday we were out. That it's not just another title. Matter of fact, Rob and Julie have asked me, what's the title for this? Because I don't always give titles. Uh, I have them written down, but I don't always give it because I'm not, I don't base it upon titles. It's what's in my heart. But uh, I wrote down some things, and I will say it again for those who haven't been here. There's a song that talks about it's a new season, it's a new day. And it says there's a new, it's a new season, it's a new day. A fresh anointing flowing my way. Now I'm expecting God to release upon his people a fresh anointing, but God will do his part. I just don't know if all believers are going to position himself for your side. God's not going to force anything over on you. You can have Someone asked Brother Hagin one time, can a Christian have a demon? He said, according to the Bible, a Christian can have whatever they desire. If you want to open yourself up to one, you can have one. Now, can a demon live in your spirit along with the Holy Ghost? No. You can only be occupied by one. But can you have demons messing in your life? Yes. You can have whatever you want. It's a new season, it's a new day, a fresh anointing flowing my way. A season of power and of prosperity. It's a new season coming to me. I thank God that it is a a new season. And so I want to talk about this anointing. You know, a lot of stuff has been talked about when it comes to the anointing of God. And and, uh, the anointing of God is not always a feeling. It's not always an emotion. And I realize we use terms... Uh, we Pentecostals, Charismatics, we use terms like, oh, I feel the anointing. And, and it is a tangible feeling at times, but what if you don't feel it? So are you anointed if you feel something more than you're anointed if you don't feel something? I tell a story uh, that, uh, that I really love. Dennis Burke had a friend. I, I've shared this story. I uh, heard him tell it personally that his friend went to a church and preached on a Wednesday night. You know Wednesday night here, Bible study. Most churches are like that. And at the close of the service, he called people forward to pray over them. And so he prayed. And when he got done praying, you know, spent a little time with the pastor, went back to the hotel, getting ready for his flight the next morning. Early the next morning, the pastor calls him and, and, and begins to talk about him full of excitement and was asking him about what was upon him last night, referring to the anointing. And he says, uh, what did you feel last night in that altar service? He said, the pastor, to be honest with you, not to be spiritual, he said, I didn't feel anything. He said, I didn't have any, any different anointing upon me. I just laid hands on the people according to the word of God, prayed to prayer of faith, and, and that's what happened. He says, you know that young man towards the end, he was wearing like a light blue shirt and so forth, described him, yes. Said today, last night when he stood in that line on one foot, he had zero toes, no toes on his foot. And this morning he woke up with all five. And he said, I didn't feel nothing last night, but I sure feel something coming up on me right now. So the point is, that miracle happened without him feeling anything. There's different examples in the Bible where things happen and you don't feel anything, but that doesn't mean that the anointing is not an operation because the anointing is not something that just always comes upon you. There is a part that comes upon you. We've talked about it. It settles upon you, but there's an anointing that is in you because the Holy Ghost is in you. And where he is, his anointing is. I have seen God do supernatural things without feeling goosebumps. 
But I've had the anointing on me so strong to where I couldn't stand up. But it didn't make God any more powerful. It's just at that point in time, my physical body just uh, had more than what it could stand up under. But the truth is, God is God. God is God. And uh, if you feel it or not, he is still God. If you feel it or not, he's still God. I, I, I've spoke to several people. I remember the first church I went to many years ago in one of the southern states. And uh, I, was, I was talking about building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And I said, at times when you have all the pressure coming against you, you've got to know how from within here to pray in the spirit because that's what builds you up. The reason why you need to build up because you're down. And when I said that, it was like looking at, it's like the old, the old proverbial uh, deer in the headlight look. And they looked at me and I realized that I crossed over a taught doctrine. The doctrine is that you can only pray in tongues when you feel it. And I, I knew that. So I perceived that in my heart. And so I navigated around that to get their, to get their guard down. And begin to minister that you can, up out of your spirit, begin to pray. Paul said in Corinthians, I will, will, that if you look it up and research it, at my will, I will pray in the spirit and I will pray in the understanding. I will sing in the spirit and I will sing in the understanding. So there is an aspect that people have to learn how to operate in because he, the Holy Spirit, the anointing is already resident inside. That's why I come against it, not come against it. I emphasize it so much because you have so many different people in this church over a period of time that didn't all come from the same Pentecostal background. And we all have layers that we, that, that we deal with. We all have layers that we deal with. And, you know, if you'd asked me many years ago when I started preaching, that's why when Shannon asked me, uh, you know, he said, I found some tapes where you were preaching here in the 80s. You know, I started in 83. He said, what do you want me to do with them? I said, throw them away. I said, somebody could get hurt listening to that stuff. Yeah, because you preach what you know. And you don't always know what you think you know. And uh, because at that time, I would have said that until you spoke in tongues, I'd have made comments like this. You don't have the Holy Ghost. And when I realized you can't be born again without the Holy Ghost, and anybody that's born again is a child of God, and they can be led by the Spirit of God, and you can't be led by something that's not in you. So I changed it. Now, there's a difference between having the Holy Spirit inside of you and being baptized and overflowing in it with the evidence speaking other tongues. But he's in you. That's why it says out of your belly. Right. He's got to be in you to flow out of you. Yes. Yes. And people don't receive sometimes because they're waiting for something to flow into them. Yes. Instead of allowing it to flow up out of them. Hallelujah. Spring up, oh well. Yes. Yes. It's in there. It'll flow out of you. So a lot of people don't receive for years because they're waiting for something to flow down in them. He's already there. So that means the anointing is already there. You're anointed to lay hands on the sick because the healer's in you by the Holy Spirit. You're anointing to bring life to people because the life giver is in you by the Holy Spirit. So if there's a new season, there's a new day, a fresh anointing coming my way. So it's going to be fresh because we're going to learn how to stir it up. Stir it up. So I'm not, you know, people say, you know, God's going to anoint you afresh. He is going to because there's going to be something energizing, vigorating in my life by the word. And it's going to stir up to something new. Because God is not old. God is new. He's, his, his blessings and stuff are fresh every morning, new every day. So God has something good for us every day. But the anointing is in you. The anointing's in you to live. The anointing's in you to understand. The anointing's in you to move forward. The anointing's in you to give you answers to things that you need. He said, I will bring all things back to your remembrance. How's he going to bring it back? Because he's in you. The God, the helper, is inside of you. So when we look at this anointing, uh, I don't look at it like, man, I don't feel something, so I'm, I'm not anointed. No, I've laid hands on people where I felt nothing, nothing. 
nothing. And uh, it's like cold. Uh, Angel said to me many times, standing right there. Matter of fact, one day I came in here, I was just frustrated. Nobody's ever came to this sanctuary frustrated. I'm sure it's the only one. <laughs> Except for those of you that are frustrated right now. Uh, but uh, I was frustrated one Sunday morning. I dealt with a couple situations that I'm thinking, are you serious type situations? And I was frustrated. I told her, I said, I'm so frustrated. I said, uh, I'm going to have to extend the worship just to get this thing off of me. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking if it gets on me like that, I've told her many times, if this thing tries to hit me, what does it do to people just sitting out there? And I said, I'm frustrated. And she leaned over and in a few minutes she says, you, you, you better get ready. God's getting ready to do something. I went, I've said back to her, we'll, we'll get ready. <laughs> Because frustration, yeah, that's better than just saying shut up, uh, but, but get ready. And I'm telling you what, nothing, nothing, literally. Hadn't it happened? It's more than once, actually, I'm sorry to tell it. And uh, I'm sitting there going, shamba, ka, da, da, ba. I mean, you could hardly get it up out. Of. And she comes over and grabs me by the arm, stand up. She'll, she, she, she did this. Oh, get ready. God's getting ready to do something. I was going, oh, woman, you have no idea. <laughs> I wanted to lay hands on a couple people all morning. And you want, you're telling me to get ready. I'm telling the truth. And I, it's, it's serious. This is how good God is. This is why people say, you know, how quick are you to cry or whatever? Because that's what God, from the time I stepped there to God here, all of a sudden the word of the Lord come up on me. And then supernatural things started flowing out from me. And I know it wasn't because it was just all the distractions the enemy tried to put me through right here. I was already here early. I was already prayed early. I've already had it prayed out. I already prepared. But it was like between 10.05 and 10.15. And it's like, I, I just seem to go home and regroup. But let me tell you, the anointing is not based upon feeling. It's based upon the revelation of the Holy One inside of you. So I've told, I've told Angel, if, if we feel pressure within our family, as tight as we try to keep it in the things of God, what are people going through? I mean, it's like, you know, it, it's, it becomes real that we understand that you get under attack. But we do know the same God. We don't have a special get out of pressure pass. We get out the same way that everybody else does. Through the word of God. Through prayer. Praying in the spirit. Going to the bedroom. Worshiping God. Until things get, until we get some breakthrough. And just say to each other, we, we refuse to fear. We refuse to get concerned. We're going to trust God because God is real. Amen. Now, you may have emotions you work through before you get to that room. But the point is, you know, everybody's got to do it the same way. I don't know anybody that has a, a free way of living in victory without having to work at it. I don't know anybody. I don't know anybody that's exempt from having to live by the word. I don't know anyone. If you find somebody that says, you know, I'm already reached to the place where I don't have to use the word to live in victory, you better run from that voice. Because the truth is, we're all going to have to do it every day through your word, by your spirit. This is how we live. And the Bible says the just shall live by faith. So this is how we live. This is not how we preach. It's not how we talk. It's how we live. The anointing is not just something we talk about. It's how we live. And so I told you to turn to a text somewhere this morning. Uh, uh, what was that? Numbers 11. I did. I was going to add some things there, but I was reminded I hadn't even read the Bible yet. Numbers 11. Numbers 11. And uh, let me just go right down here to verse 16. Uh, you can read 1 through, 16, your, 1 through 15 yourself. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you may... 
whom, whom you know to be elders of the people and officers over them, bring them to the tabernacle of meetings or take them to church. Bring them to the house of God. Bring them to the house of God that they may stand there with you. Then I will come down and talk with you there. Now, it didn't say I'm going to talk with them. I'm going to talk with you there in front of them. I will come down and talk with you there. I will take of the spirit that is upon you, and I will put the same upon them. So here is what, here is what happens. There's something that does come upon us. Now, remember, everyone in the Old Testament uh, were not born again. No one was born again in the Old Testament. They were no one in the Old Testament was born again. No one had the Holy Spirit in them. No one. Not until Jesus breathed upon the disciples in John chapter 12, it said he, I mean, John chapter 20, it said he breathed on them and said, receive you the Holy Ghost. Until that point there, no one had the Holy Spirit presiding or residing or presiding in them. That is when they were born again by the Spirit of God. Now they were baptized in the Holy Spirit in that upper room in Acts chapter 2. But he breathed on them and said, receive receive ye the Holy Ghost. That's when life came into them. That's the same breath that God talked about when he created Adam. The Bible said he created Adam and he breathed in Adam and he became a living soul or a speaking spirit. So God breathed life into Adam. That's what made Adam live. Jesus breathed upon the upon his men and spiritual life came in them and they became a living being on the inside. They became a living being, a speaking, walking spirit in an earthly body. But they were baptized in the Holy Ghost in chapter 2. So here's what it says. You can't do this by yourself. You can't do this without the anointing anyway. You can't do it. So I want you to get the elders, the people to know to be leaders. And I want you to bring them. I'm going to speak with you there. And I'm going to take of the spirit that's upon you already. I'm going to take what's up on you and I'm going to put it upon them. And that anointing that's upon you is going to go up on, it's going to be upon them. And that anointing upon them is what's going to help them help you fulfill what I've called you to do. So what it tells me is you don't do it without the anointing. You don't do it. Now, today, the anointing that is within us can be imparted and can be stirred up in others. Now, the anointing does come upon us. I've had the anointing. I've ministered out of the anointing on the inside of me. But then there's been times, not all times, something supernatural has come up on me. It's like somebody throwing a cloak, a blanket upon me. And when that happens, it's like this is not just a the normal Pray, anoint, lay hands on the sick anointing. There's something supernatural that just cloaked me. There's an anointing within, an anointing that comes up on us for special tasks. The anointing came up on Elisha when Elijah, when he outran the chariot, it came up on him. Well, number one, it wasn't in him. It came up on him. But I noticed even in the old, even in the New Testament, even though the anointing was within, the anointing came up on them for special assignment. That they did things that naturally they could never do. So I thank God that he has the anointing resident inside of us by the Holy Spirit because he's there. And when need be, something supernatural could come up on you as he wills. As he wills. And if he never wills to do it, then you just be satisfied with the power that presides within you because that resident anointing is enough for you to do what he called you to do. Amen. I remember being at Ramah and uh, it was a big thing. You know, I thought Brother Hagen was old then, but Brother Hagen was only in his 80s when he passed away, 86, and that was in 03. So I'd been out of school for a long time. So uh, so I think he was only like 68 years old uh, when, when I was at that uh, at, at Rhema or something like that. And I'm thinking 68 then when you're in your when you're 21, that's 2021. 20, that's pretty old. You know, it's not old now. You that 68 and above. That's not old now. Uh, uh, I'm closer to 68 than I am back to where I started from. So it's not old now. But anyway, uh, you know. 
Brother Hagen made statements about the Holy Spirit that, that, that changed my life forever. He changed my life forever. And when he talked about how the Holy Spirit would come up on him, and I witnessed that in those meetings, uh, I could tell when he talked about how he ministered out of the anointing from within and then how this supernatural anointing came up on him. And so he didn't just teach it. He began to flow and demonstrate it when it happened. I, I, remember, I remember in a meeting, uh, this was back in uh, the, the fall of 85, the fall of 85. I'd never seen anything like this. There was 3,000 people in this room. They brought extra chairs in, in the old auditorium, about 3,000 people. And uh, this kind of stuff will mark your life. And I've, I've mentioned this. And uh, in this auditorium, that w- it, was his, it was his fall Bible seminar. He had a fall, a winter, and a spring Bible seminar then. The winter Bible seminar took over everything that became uh, the most popular. And in that seminar, uh, the Spirit of God got so thick, the Spirit of God fell in that place. I mean, fell in that place, so visible. Now, we're all born again. Hopefully, everybody's in there is born again. Let's say we all were. We were all born again. We have the Holy Ghost in us. But I remember coming to myself. Now, I don't know how to say that. People can say, I don't know if I can believe this. But I'm telling you, I wouldn't sit here and try to tell a story just to make something up if I wasn't there. I remember when I came to myself, I was on my knees praying i looked around everybody's on their knees praying and i don't remember him telling any of us get on our knees the spirit of god the glory of god came over us to such a point that we were all prostrate before god on our face before god without him mentioning anything and when he got up it was the most supernatural thing as he began to flow by the anointing of God, and he said, uh, matter of fact, it was the last night of that seminar, and he said, the Lord spoke to me to continue this, and he continued that that meeting. Uh, But I I knew the difference then. He preached about the Spirit of God within us and what came upon us. So something came upon all of us in that room. Now, I don't know if all, everybody was there, and I looked around, I couldn't see anybody standing. But to this day, to this day, you're looking at 85 to 21. To this day, I don't remember. I've looked at it. I've searched at it. I can't remember one time did he say, let's all get on our knees and pray and honor God. I don't remember. I just knew the power of God came into a place and we were on our face and not knowing how we actually got there. Now, how many knows you can experience that one time and never forget it? It will change your life forever. So I'll never take away that the Spirit of God will come up on for certain assignments and certain situations. But, but he that's inside of us is the one that's going to lead us and guide us and direct us and teach us and strengthen us and keep us out of the what I called last week the, the, the web of deception. He'll keep us out of all of that. He is good at helping us be who he wants us to be, and that's his people. So I'm going to take of this anointing. That's up on you, Moses, and I'm going to put it up on these men because it's that anointing that's going to help you do what I've called you to do. Don't ever underestimate this anointing. So before we close, let me talk about the anointing in this aspect. People has asked me, well, what what is the anointing? If it's not a feel good, what is the anointing? Well, let me give you my favorite definition. If you haven't written it down in the last 16 years, let me give you my favorite definition. The anointing is the part of God that's in or comes up on mankind, which would be man or woman, accomplishing only the things that God himself can do. That's the anointing. That means there's nothing we can do in the natural. Well, what God's anointing does, we can't do. We do it by the anointing. Paul said, I, I am who I am, and I do what I do by the grace of God, which is part of the anointings and giftings and everything else within that grace. So the anointing is the part of God that, that res, that's resident inside of us or comes up on us, accomplishing only the things that God himself can do. So if you want to do what Jesus did, and represent God, then you're going to have to understand how this anointing flows from within us. Now, there's other aspects. Let let me read this to you. 
I did read a scripture today, so I'm clear there. Here it is. The anointing, one part of the scriptures, you read, there's different symbols you read about the Holy Spirit. Water, oil. And when you talk about the anointing, it would be oil. Uh, next Sunday, I'm going to talk about the oil, how Samuel was anointed. Here's, here's how God, uh, God told Moses, bring your leaders together, and I'm going to put up on them what's in you, this anointing. I'm not going to turn them into to a bunch of Moseses, but I'm going to anoint them to help you do what you're called to do. You know why this is important to me? Because the more you understand the anointing of God that's in you and what God's purpose is in this place, the better we are to do what God called us to do as a family. It's very important. So the anointing is, is to, the, or the, the anointing is defined as to put on, we're going to put on, this is, an, this is another way to look at it. To put on, to smear all over, and to rub in. So in essence, when they looked at the anointing, the anointing was oil. It was to pour on. One part of the anointing is defined as to pour on. Another part is to smear all over. It's like people go to the beach. They anoint themselves with suntan lotion. They pour it on. And smear it all over. But, but they don't just smear it all over. They make sure they rub it in. So that's the part of the anointing. Three part. Pour it on. Smear it all over. And rubbed in. How many knows it's not enough just to have it poured on you? I want it poured on me. I want to smear it all over me. And I want God to rub it in. Amen. That is what... This is about, this is, this is Old Testament going all the way up to the new, dealing with this anointing. Now, I've been not personally in meetings. I have, but I hadn't been in the prayer line. But uh, uh, Pastor Rothwell talks about a story that he was uh, in a meeting. He was there, that the guy had a bowl of oil, a bowl of oil. And uh, was it one of the full gospel businessmen meetings or somebody's in there? But uh, a bowl of oil, and he had a guy walk with him. He put his hands in the oil and came out and put them on their head. He said it ran down their head. And I'm thinking, onto their suit? You know, that, I mean, that's, uh, that's dry, clean, worthy right there if you can get it out. And so, uh, but you know, if I, if, if I was so hungry for God, mess my suit up. Just pour it all over me. Smear me from head to toe. And not just smear me, rub that into where it never leaves my life. That's the anointing. So people say, don't just put lotion, rub it in. Why? So things don't rub it off of you. So things don't get it off of your body. So that's the anointing. The anointing is the part of God that, that's in, that comes up on man, accomplishing only things that God himself can do. And the anointing from the Old Testament, you'll see examples. It's poured up on, it's smeared all over, and it's rubbed in. And I'm telling you what, you can tell who's been poured on, who's been smeared all over, and who's allowed it to be rubbed in. There's a difference in people's walk and their talk. And it's not about a flip or a flop. It's about a revelation of knowing that Christ in me, the hope of glory. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. Come on.